done with the uh, orientation. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Lamola. Can you introduce yourself to members? Yes. And in uh, doing so, tell us why you uh, applied for board membership. And maybe tell us um, in brief your knowledge about MDDA, what is it doing? Um, and then after that, members will engage. Uh, they will take five minutes that you, they will share with you in questions and then responses. Uh, must be very uh, pointed on, 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 on issues that you want to raise because of time. Yeah, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll run until we finish. Uh, we, we have nothing um, in relation to the conflict of interest. Um, uh, if, because for, for you to go through the process, we must have check your qualifications. We must also vet the uh, the candidates, but there is nothing uh, next to your name. As far as this report of uh, SSA, uh, there is nothing. It means uh, you are in a sense clean, if I can put it that way, unless otherwise. Um, over to you. Thank, thank you very much, Chair, for, for the opportunity to, to come to this committee and present myself. I just want to, with your indulgence, Chair, this being a national platform, to just pass my condolences to my former colleague in the Youth League, Cindy Samagata, and hope that one day this parliament will debate this uh, spate of killings of activism ac across the country and uh, hopefully there will be a solution. Chair, with that indulgence, I, I, I applied for this position because I believe I possess the skills that uh, this committee needs to, to effect the objectives of the MDDA Act in terms of uh, diversification of the media space and also in terms of promoting small broadcasters and community players in various communities across the country. And um, <clears throat> because I come from a background of uh, community activism, I'm currently running a law firm where I also represent various uh, communities in many parts of the country on various interests in terms of mining, in terms of um, uh, CPAs, which are community organizations, but also in terms of the BEE Act, uh, the Broad-Based Black Economic uh, Empowerment Act, and also I also handle a lot of competition law matters, which I believe will assist uh, the MDGA to deal with the concentration and diversify the media space. And um, I also handle some matters in the telecommunications uh, and, um, and, and, um, and the ICT sector, which has then given me the required skills to, to believe that I can assist this committee. And uh, in terms of my qualifications, I think the committee has, has them. I won't recite them for the committee, except to, to say that uh, it is indeed correct that uh, uh, there are no other issues. And um, I also have some uh, experience. I've se I, I, I serve in the Council of the Investor, of the China Investor of Technology. And I think what the MDGA is dealing with uh, also relates a bit to, the, to that institutions because it's to balance the interest of students, the interest of management in line with the TET statutes, and make sure that it's able to, to, to deal with redress and uh, give access to, 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 to the majority of the youth of this country. And yeah, I think uh, in yeah. a nutshell, that's why I'm chair. Thank you very much. That's the introduction. Arnold Van, Van Dijk. Oh, Fandam. Okay. Honorable Fandam. 
Um, thank you for availing yourself for the interview. Um, on various occasions, you have been accused of hate speech and inciting violence. Given the role you are applying for, do you think that you are fit to serve on this board, which aims to promote diversity? That's my first question. My second question, what is the role of the minister in relation to the board of the MDDA? With regards to recent uh, media reports on the MDDA, do you think that the previous minister did a proper oversight role? Did you play a proper oversight right? And can you maybe deliberate on that? And then one of the biggest challenges uh, faced by community media is that many government departments are not uh, keen to advertise in their publications or radio stations. And um, in some cases, uh, many of the government departments wanted it, it to be done free. How would you address this issue? And um, yeah if you were chosen to be on the MDDA board. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, oh. Okay, no, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, uh, the honorable member is correct that um, I have been accused of uh, hate speech. But you will have seen that uh, where I have been accused of hate speech is where I was speaking about the, the issues of concentration of the wealth of this country in the hands of a few uh, white minorities, which is uh, recorded in many reports of, 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 of this country. And that's what led to the BE Act. And uh, I, the, uh, there was a time when the Afro Forum took me to, to the Equality Court, but they, they withdrew the the process. They could not proceed. I suspect it's because they knew they could not sustain an argument on hate speech because when you speak about redress, it can be hate speech. The constitution of this country has got uh, clear limitations and um, sometimes uh, speaks about redress and affirmative action. And uh, in that context, it wants uh, to see redress in that context. So when you, you, you speak about redressing and also inclusion of, uh, of the majority of this country into the mainstream of the economy. It can be considered to be, to be, to be, to, to be hate speech. On the, on the issue of the, of the role of the, of the, of the minister, the, the, the role of the minister is to prescribe uh, policy and, um, and develop uh, acts and so forth. And I think that's where uh, the role of the minister Ends and it becomes the role of this uh, committee to play an oversight role on the 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 structure. In terms of the recent media media reports, I I don't have the clear details. I have seen when there was a confrontation. I think it's last week Thursday between the CEO and the members of the board with regard to <clears throat> who was supposed to, 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 to do what and, and, and so forth. And it does look like there's been a, a turn out of many board members, which is not very clear why there is such a, a, a situation. But I think the committee is trying to arrest the situation. And I, I think that uh, with more firmness from the, from the minister in terms of being clear in terms of the act and the prescription, and also the issues of corporate governance compliance by the board, which um, is it's, it's clear from the Companies Act and the King 4 and 3 reports, the, the, the board can, can indeed uh, be able to function. With regard to the, 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 the government uh, uh, unwillingness to expecting to, 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 to be provided free airtime, I think it's an unfair expectation because when government goes to big commercial mainstream media, they pay for, 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 the, for the advertising space or for whatever they are requesting the mainstream media. So they must do the same with the, with the, with the, with the, with the either community radio stations or the print uh, small players in the commercial field. Chair, I'm going to use Honorable Van Dijk's, uh the rest of her five minutes. I know we said one per person, but uh, I'll be using the rest of her minutes. 
Yeah, thank you. So in terms of the MDDA Act, Mr. Lamola, it's um, anyone who is an office bearer or employee of any party movement or organization of a party political nature is disqualified from the board. Now, I mean, you're a lawyer. The spirit of uh, the specific section is that there are no uh, pol party political deployees on the MDDA board. Um, I think there's very few um, acts relating to state-owned entities where that is made very explicit. I think it's a CASA and the MDDA. I can't think of any other state-owned entity that says that. Given your uh, proximity, a very, very close proximity to the ANC, uh, do you think that by being on the MDDA board you are in line with the spirit of the act? Uh, yes, I, I, I think so. I, I've, been, I've been declared fit and proper by the High Court of this country. I'll be... No, that's I'll not be, my question, be, about uh, being close to the ANC. Given the fact that the spirit of the act says no employees, no um, public representatives of organizations of a party political nature. And given the fact that you, I, I, I read in the media that you've been nominated uh, for Mpumalanga uh, ANC leadership, I mean, do you feel that uh, you will be a deployee of the ANC on the MDDA board? Yeah, no, I'm answering your, your question. I will be an attorney of the High Court uh, for 10 years in, on the 1st of October, and I've been declared fit and proper. I report to a professional body. And um, which is the Law Society of South Africa. So I, I don't hold any political office in any political party. Uh, I used to be a leader of the Youth League, and we were disbanded in 2013. Since then, I've never held any political office, from branch level in the ANC to, to the national office, nor do I hold any political office in the leagues of the ANC. So I don't have any, a, any political office that I'm holding, and I believe that... Um, the act is very clear. It says that um, you must be an office barrier. I'm, I'm not. And I think the interpretation which I had, and that is the reason why I applied, is because I, I looked at the interpretation and I looked at myself. I saw that I qualify. Uh, I can pass the, that test of, uh, of, the, of the act. And um, the act also expects that the person must be properly qualified. It even stipulates the kind of qualifications. So I think this committee must look at my qualifications. Where I looked at my qualifications, do I qualify? Looking at my fact, the fact that, uh, as I've said, I already have a professional body and um, that I report to, and uh, the fact that uh, I do not hold any political office. I think that does not uh, disqualify me unless the committee wants to say that the fact that I've once been an office barrier and hold any political office. Therefore, I can't save this country because there are examples like yeah, the, thanks, the, thanks, the, 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 the current... Oh, we've got five minutes. Sorry, I just okay. want to get one last question in. Um, your name has been thrown into the hat for uh, Bumalanga ANC uh, chairperson. If you are nominated, will you accept that nomination? There is no conference of the ANC in Bumalanga this year. It's a... Uh, it's, a, it's a speculations in the media which is not informed by an upcoming conference. There is no conference, so I want... I, there's no nomination to accept. <laughs> there's no conference. If there was a conference, maybe I'll answer the question, Let's but now there's no conference. Cast your eye into the future. You are nominated for leadership. Do you, what do you do? and you are on the MDDA board, what do you do? Do you accept it, or do you say, no, thank you, I'm an MDDA board member? And unfortunately, Honorable Spandam, you want us to enter into the realm of, of, of speculation, and I don't want to, to arrive at that, at that stage. But what I can say is that if I do one day become elected into any office of a political party, Obviously, I will have to resign my membership of the board because the act is very clear. But at this stage, I'm not elected. I don't sit in any office of a political party. So, And I think this country has got a very good example of the former Deputy Chief Justice who went to serve this country very well in the Constitutional Court, who was a former Deputy President of the PEC, 
which did not preclude him. And the Constitutional Court has got many people who have played a role in political parties, who have served this country very well. Okay. Uh, you, you, you are done with your 10 minutes. With your five minutes, five minutes, you are done. Honorable Dose. Sure, sure. Uh, firstly, let me um, pass my condolences to you because I know that you served in the same team with uh, Cindy Somakak, who was declared to have passed away yesterday. I know that you belong to a much more robust generation, and uh, the reason why you are not in any office in the ANC may still be related to the 2013 activities. Now, the examples you have given in relation to political office bearing, uh, as well as uh, in particular the Deputy Chief Justice, is that the Deputy Chief Justice had taken a decision that he's, he, he will not succumb to political ambition in the future. He, he was taking a decision that I'm a lawyer. I'm not going to one day become a president. So the conflict here is precisely a situation where you occupy the MDDA board. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, you build up your political uh, ambition. And I will add that to the fact that you didn't only apply to MDDA. You applied to the SABC. You applied to ICASA. So there is a sense here that as a person who is a politician, you seem a little bit more ambitious, and it might be precisely for, let me just uh, be busy here whilst uh, I re-emerge in the ANC. <laughs> so, and that's the point we are, we are building here. These bodies have nothing to do with the membership of political parties as much as they have to do with strict professionals, uh, and that's the doubt. So I'm giving you an opportunity to redeem yourself in that sense. No, th th thank you very much. I did not apply for the CASA board. Indeed, I did apply for, 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 for the SABC. With regard to future ambitions, obviously I have already stated that I will not really want to enter into the realm of uh, speculation as to what will happen. In okay, I know your answer. I'm saying to you, the point here is, and the perfect example you have given, is the Deputy Chief Justice, after he entered as a professional judge, clearly he was not at some point wanting to be a political leader. So we are distinguishing here between mere professionals who belonged in the past to political bodies and people with political ambition. So for instance, at some point in your life, you might be nominated to be uh, in the NEC or in the PEC. The point is, you still have political ambition. Is it wise for us to put people with political ambition in these boards? For they might use these boards for the very political ambitions. That's the fear. That's the, the ethical dilemma a lot of us find ourselves in. So what is your take on that? I think uh, Honorable Nduzu can take leave from the fact that I am currently serving at the Tswane University of Technology. And I don't use that for political end game. Everybody there can attest the fact that we have found an institution that had problems, and we have... Okay, let me help them. you. These are media institutions. So if I'm on the SABC board, I could influence the broadcasting uh, services there for my own political campaigns. I could redirect the MDDA fundings to publications that might favor me in political bed. So the example you are giving me is irrelevant. It is, so it is, redeem yourself in if, this sense. If you can allow me to extrapolate, you will okay. understand that it is not irrelevant. There is a constituency in the Tswane University of Technology which are students, which are largely voters in the public. I can channel the NFSAS funds, I can channel many things to buy my, my, my as you are, if I'm that kind of a character. But I've played my a fair role to ensure that whoever is a student in the campus who deserves to be given NFSAS, he one gets minute. it. That's it. All right. I, it's unsatisfactory because at the moment you don't have any political office. So we are speculating about the future. The last one is, in the entire CV, you have never been interested really in media and in the broadcasting sector uh, at all. Um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. So why, why are you applying to these bodies now? 
uh, and where, how would you explain your interest, which at least in relation to majority of your CB coverage, seems like a, a new interest? Because uh, it's not fair for us to put people who are just interested now to enter into the boards. A lot of people you are competing with, some of them have been in the media industry for a while. It doesn't look like you've been interested before. Uh, why? Why now? Why are you now taking an interest in the media and broadcasting sectors? It's because uh, in my day-to-day -day work as an attorney, I have worked with guys in the sector. And um, when I worked with them, I could see the challenges that they are facing which is uh, the issues of high concentration in terms of their entry. And that's the reason why I did uh, the, the postgraduate certificate in telecommunications and regulations at VETS, because I wanted to enable myself to, to help them in the sector, and which I've been able to, to do through the competition commission and through the work that I've done for them. It's uh, just unfortunate I can't really disclose because some of them, they are confidentiality issues. But that has been an interest which I've been doing for the past almost five years. Thank you very much, Honorable Matisha. No, thanks. Well, I've listened to your introductions. And uh, albeit this was raised, I wish to go back to say, let me put it to you that uh, you will obviously want to use MDDA to take the political uh, you know, understanding uh, that you have beyond and uh, converse in the country. Now, I, 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 as I've said, the uh, honorable uh, member is that I, I'm, a, I'm a fair person and I'm a, a, a person of integrity. I will uh, apply the NDDA Act in terms of its objective to serve the, 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 the broadcasting industry. I'm going to apply the, 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 my mind to, to, to effect the policies of the MDDA for the benefit of the sector and not in any way for my own personal uh, uh, benefit. You are still going to apply your mind, uh, meaning uh, that is not the case. You are still going to. Okay. My second question is, um, yes, we have gone into discussions, you have put your positions, but uh, you have not said what is the uh, primary functions of the MDDA. Yes, uh, Honorable uh, Malisha, I, I have already stated that uh, I'm going to to apply my mind to the policies of the MDGA for the benefit of the MDGA. And the primary function of the MDGA, I have already touched a bit on with regard to promoting diversity and uh, promoting and assisting new uh, players and making sure in terms of redress in the exclusion and marginalization of the disadvantaged communities, providing support primarily to community and small commercial media projects, encourage ownership and control of and access to media by historically disadvantaged communities, by developing capacity and channeling resources in their direction. Okay, once again, you are indicating to me uh, that uh, you don't as yet know precisely what uh, the MDDA actually wants to attain. Uh, that's exactly what you have said. You are saying you are going to uh, look into that. Okay, thanks, understand. Now, the next issue is the issue of resources and corruption uh, that has uh, uh, been there in that particular area. MDDA, ICASA, etc. What do you say about that? I think it's clear that um, the MDGA must be must function in terms of the act. It must function in terms of the policies and um, follow its uh, own uh, prescribed procedures. Any non-compliance must be attended to and be dealt with uh, decisively in terms of the prescription of the various uh, acts that we have that deals with corruption. If there is any act of corruption, um, 
uh, uncovered by either the Auditor General or any independent auditors, it must be reported to relevant authorities who must attend to it. As I end, I go back to this thing of the uh, political uh, uh, position to say that we have all these political organizations in the country, we have all these political understandings and commitments uh, in the country, and uh, you have come out openly to say, this is where I am, etc. I'm not saying you should not uh, be in a particular direction, but I, however, am saying that as a result of that which you have said, uh, in my own understanding, you may not be fair uh, for the people of our country using MDDA. And thank you, Chairperson. Do you want to say something there? Yes, uh, because I have already stated that I do play a role in my professional life. I have been fair. I represent anybody who comes to me irrespective of uh, political affiliation. I'm guided by the constitution of this country. And I think in executing my duties for the board, I'll be guided by the act and the policies. So that will be part of the fairness that is expected of me. And I think I've been fair, as I've stated previously, where I'm saving at the Twana Invest of Technology in terms of what I'm supposed to, to do in executing the, the responsibility in terms of the statutes of the university. Thank you very much. <coughs> I have, uh, Honorable Kalako, I have 10 minutes for you to share, just like we did in TA. Uh, so you'll have to indicate as to who are the two or uh, one person, okay. okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, should I say advocate? No, I mean, I mean, I mean, I tell you. Okay. Yeah. Leonard, uh, <laughs> sorry, Leonard Fred. <laughs> um, can I ask you this question? Depending on whether you think the people who are worried about your political membership, that worry is reasonable or not. If you think it's reasonable, what reassurance would you give to society if you think that worry is reasonable? Yeah, no, I do think it's reasonable because uh, my political affiliation, as Honorable Madisha had said, it's a public uh, knowledge. It's not, um, uh, unfortunately, like the other members who come here, it's known. But I think the fact that um, I have taken an oath to respect the Constitution because of my profession, I, 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 I am expected to abide by certain kinds of ethics and standards of professionalism, and um, in my entire life, I've been guided by the Constitution. So I, I think the, 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 the public can find comfort on the fact that I'm a committed uh, member of this uh, country, committed to comply and to, the, to make sure that the Constitution of the, of the Republic is adhered to. When do you think, at what point in your view, between two contesting or and or opposing choices that the question of ethical dilemma emerge? It emerges when there are obviously personal interests. There are political uh, also biasness, but it also emerges when there are business interests because I think the committee will be aware that the, 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 the ethical dilemma can only come from a, a, a political, there are also sometimes personal compromise uh, positions, but also business can also try to, to capture any state entity. So I think that's where it emerges, but wherever it emerges, a person must be able to declare that I have got uh, this personal dilemma which makes me makes it impossible for me to execute this task as prescribed by the Companies Act and um, or any political affiliation which now makes it impossible for me to to deal with this task or if there's any business interest you can also raise it and, and so forth. And that's why I, I, I've said 
I have remained committed to. Am I correct that political ambition that you can refer to an individual is based on knowing, on having an information about that individual which has been acted outside his brain? There is also a possibility of many other ambitions which are not known because they have not been acted on by an individual. Yes, yes, you are, you are correct because there might also be business ambitions by whoever that you are interviewing here, except myself. The other members might have business ambition and the MDA and because it's not acted upon, it might not be known, even the political ambitions. But um, I mean, uh, in this space, there are well-known people who have played a role in the media. Who have, some of them went to, to, to be leaders of political parties, like the leader of the Democratic Alliance, you cannot really question that uh, when she was a journalist, she played a role. She reported independently. She was a fierce uh, a, 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 a critic of the apartheid government at the time and played a role. And she was independent. So she can't be faulted for the fact that she then went to, to join party politics. And there are many journalists who did the same. And uh, they could not have been punished at the time when they were journalists that uh, they have got their future ambitions, which might not have been known at the time. Um, now we talk of, of media diversification, which I guess it takes place from a context of ownership and also use of different languages so that there's access to the broadest category of communities in South Africa. Again, I want you to repeat your understanding of the basic functions of MDDA as you attempted to do, if you can, I, I just want to hear what you said. The basic functions of MDDA, you, 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 you did explain something. I do. Yeah. understand the, its key function is to create an enabling environment for media development and diversity that reflects the needs and aspirations of all South Africans. Red rights exclusion and marginalization of disadvantaged communities and persons from access to the media and the media industry, providing support primarily to community and small media projects through research and uh, also assisting uh, uh, previously disadvantaged languages and diversity in the language, encourage ownership and control of and access to media by historical disadvantaged communities by developing capacity and channeling resources in that direction for both uh, social and commercial. Thank you. Um, as we sit now, what do you understand to be the challenges with regard to execution of those functions by MTDA? The, the challenge is, is, the biggest challenge they do have is funding because most of uh, the projects do not have enough, they do not have enough money to fund the projects. Two is the fact that um, some of the, of, the, of, the, of the boards have got the accountability challenges to, towards the N A A MDDA. And uh, as we sit now, there is no board which can really hold them to account and also assist them with whatever that they are requesting from the MDDA. There, there is also issues of competing interests between uh, the, broad, the, the, the community radio stations and the print media, which they feel the, 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 the print media feels that they get a, a, a lesser sly of the share and the community radio stations, they get the biggest lie. And so because of them getting the, because of the formula which is being used, most of the money is coming from the, 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 the subscribers. Which uh, rele immediate relevant acts do you think pertain to MDDA as an entity and its functions? Acts of parliament yes. is, is the, is the CASA Act, the Electronics Communications Act, and I think even Santec because it deals with the 
signal uh, transmission and uh, obviously the constitution of the republic. Then there are other entire, like the USASA and so forth. Do you want to share with us key important issues of governance just in general as you are applying to be a board member which will be responsible for the good uh, corporate governance of the entity? Yes, it's um, compliance. It's a good corporate governance comes obviously from the, the recent King 4 report that the uh, uh, directors must act with the proper fiduciary duties, with duty and care, applying their skill, and uh, with, the, with all their skills uh, being used for, in terms of the, of the entity. And um, they must do so in line with the clear principles of transparency and accountability. One last question, if you have. If at any given point in time, an ANC campaigner comes to you and say, I want you to carry this MDA activity in my favor, or the chances of me campaigning you, campaigning for you for a particular key position, uh, I will be dropped. Now, I will tell him that it doesn't work like that. Everybody wants assistance from the institution must follow the proper procedure. What choice would you make if indeed you will lose that opportunity politically? I better lose the opportunity and comply with the act. Thanks. Thank you very much, Honorable Kongbel, and uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Lamula. Thank you. If you have a question to members, it's, it's, it's now your turn. No, I, I, I don't have. <laughs> I don't have. I just want to. I can only thank the. Yeah, no, you, you exhausted your 10 minutes. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, you, you exhausted the, the 10 minutes. No, you did. You did exhaust it. You, you did exhaust your, your minutes. Um, thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Lamola. And I, I was saying, if you have. Any question to members, you may ask that question. No, I don't have, except to thank the committee to, for allowing me to come here. And it's a national platform, so thank you very much. Let us also thank you to make a contribution in this. Um, and again, to keep you waiting, we apologize profusely.